hugely enjoy the game here. As we if anywhere else in the cabin, the umpires making their way to the middle. Here, even though they lost the first game of CPL. But the Barbados Tridents, they've been in a good form against this side. The head-to-head -head battle is the Tridents have won eight and the Stars have only won two. So it's going to be important for the St. Lucian Stars to change that. They've got to change in the sense that they, they're going to be bowling first. And we heard Darren Sammy saying maybe it's important for them to, to try something different. Batting first hasn't been effective chance for them to relax into the innings out there in the middle and as Tom mentioned the Barbados Tridents winning the toss again and, and batting which seems to go against the grain of what T20 cricket's about. Yeah it has done to a certain extent but uh, I just got a feeling that, uh, that the Tridents just want to give their top order a chance to bat uh, without the pressure of uh, run rates or, 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 a, or a formidable score on the scoreboard and uh, generally that, uh, you know, maybe this toss is more about building for the whole tournament against really concerning themselves with uh, doing the absolutely right decision on the toss on this given day. But uh, they do boast a very good batting lineup, and uh, I'm sure the likes of Kane Williamson is bursting at the seams to get going in this tournament. I would agree with you there because if I go back a couple of CPL tournaments, it's one of the things that Kyron Pollard did very well. He took the pressure off his batters by winning the toss, and I think when they actually won the tournament, that's one of the things he did going through. He batted first because he felt that his batters were under less pressure setting, and uh, they played better that way, so we'll see how it works out. They need more from this man. Wing Smith, his strike rate, a couple of scores, 20 from 24 and 20 from 31. He's a wonderful player in this format. He's experienced. And talking about experience, 13 from 20 and 7 from Smith. 5 in the two games for Gay Williamson. The scores, Needs 20 to find from the 24 in 20. I've never seen him that try here in St. Lucia. But the groundsman who I respect as the best in the region assures me that it'll be fine. Yeah, I had a chat to Ken Crafton, who's the groundsman you're referring to, uh, and he was pretty confident, and I also agree with you. That's two, that's two in one go. I agree with you both things. <laughs> he, he, uh, he felt that it was going to have plenty of runs in it. He was confident with it. And that'll be four. Two short, five leg up. Nestle countdown, the well, clock is the ticking. Start. Ticking on the St. Lucia stars who need to get points on the board. Let's play, says Ampad Basarat. Jerome Taylor swung the ball in the pre match routine practice. First run on board for the Tridents. Yeah, leg by at that. You mentioned about Jerome Taylor swinging the ball. He, he's always been a bowler that, that, that has been a puzzle to me because he has shown glimpses of brilliance over the last five years that I've watched him closely. And uh, he just seems to have a, a massive inconsistent wave through not only this tournament, but just his career. Injuries. He's been playing in England as well for Sussex. And it's a serious slope here. It's uh, cutting him off at the shins. There's no wind for the first time ever that I've come here. There's no wind blowing across the ground. A little bit of shape on that one. He's actually had some good form of late. He was played against the Indian side, picked up two for 31 and then Afghanistan one for 33 and one for 13. So kind of getting back into the side will certainly help him with his confidence and there you go, no breeze, flags aren't really moving at all. And just for our viewers who may be new in, in terms of watching cricket at this ground, Lisa, usually here at Beausejo, that wind comes across the ground. It comes across Jerome Taylor's 
right shoulder to his left as he runs in and it's very difficult towards the eastern side to hit sixes towards that eastern side of the ground there's no win tonight Darren Sammy mentioned it so maybe you could look to score both sides effectively in the air well we've seen a subtle change in the field and it's very much designed for Kane Williamson the way he bats there was two slips in place for Smith but as soon as Williamson came on strike they moved that second slip into what I'd describe as a, a fine gully uh, and he's there purely to stop Williamson from playing that run shot that he plays so beautifully down the third man which is his release shot it's his, his shot to be able to just get up the other end And by taking away that single option, it means that dots start to build up on the player and then they've got to look somewhere else to score the runs. And once that happens, they play out of their comfort zone and potentially create that opportunity that the stars are certainly looking for. So that's exactly what the teams tend to do. They, they do all their sports analysis. They look at a lot of footage. They have wagon wheels to tell them where they score their ones, twos, fours and sixes and accordingly put the field. This is a great matchup for me, Taylor versus Smith. A little bit of swing, did back hit the ground, not out, says the umpire. Two without loss. Mitch McLenahan, who has plied his trade for the Mumbai Indians, the same team as Kyron Pollard and Puran recently he's had two really good IPLs for that Mumbai Indians team and oh goodness it is uh, starting to rain here and maybe that is a symptom of the lack of wind and the humidity which is quite unusual here Jesse Ryder is out there and uh, walking off the field Jesse can you hear us yeah how's it going how disappointing is this what's that sorry how disappointing is this to have the rain interrupt so quickly? Yeah, well, coming here, it's been a nice day all day, so it's a bit disappointing walking off after one over. How have you prepared yourself, given that you've not had a lot of cricket lately? Um, to be fair, um, I've just been hitting balls, really, because, um, like I said, I haven't had much time to prepare. I took the winter off, so it's just been more cutting as many balls as I can, leading up to it. All right, Jesse. He brings in with his, with his footwear as he's approaching the crease to whether he's going to be stable at release. On target.